There is a place that is spoken about only in whispers. A dark area that spawns the beginnings of urban legends. A place where anything can happen and usually does. During the light of day, it hides just outside of you. But when the sun goes down, spirits, creatures of the night, roam free. And things do go bump in the night. It is in every state and every country. And there is no escaping it. No matter how safe you feel behind your locked doors and latched windows. So we invite you to turn down the lights and turn up your radio while we join Dave Schrader and Tim Dennis, your hosts, on a journey into the darkness on the edge of town. Good evening and welcome to the darkness on the edge of town. This is your host, Dave Schrader, along with me co-host, Tim Dennis. Our guest this evening is Chris Fleming. Chris is one of the stars and hosts of the TV show on the Biography Channel called Dead Famous, Ghostly Encounters, where they actually, uh, uh, both Chris and his um, co-host, uh, Gail Porter, go from haunted location to haunted location to try to make contact with the spirits of famous celebrities. Uh, now, I know we have a, a quick call here on the line, uh, Chris, if you don't mind taking another call. Sure. Kayla, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, sweetheart. What's your question? Um, about how many spirits have you tried to contact, and of those, how many have not come through? Well, actually, we've done 31 episodes, and uh, three of those episodes were live, and uh, you probably won't get to see those aired here. Two of them were special, so we had about 28, I want to say, uh, 26 episodes dealing with celebrities specifically. How many did we come in contact? Let's see. Frank Sinatra, I came in contact with him. Marilyn Monroe. James Dean came in contact on a different episode. <laughs> Not the James Dean one. Okay. Uh, Jim Morrison, yes. Lucille Ball, yes. Albert Hitchcock, no. Houdini, I wasn't allowed to talk about it. We didn't use it. Uh, John Wayne, yes. Joan Crawford, we didn't. John Lennon, I came in contact with him in the, inside the car outside the Dakota, but we didn't have it on camera. Betty Davis, no. Buddy Holly, I came in contact with what's called place memory, where I felt how he felt right after he died and when he went into the light. Bonnie and Clyde, no. Jane Mansfield was amazing to me. It was probably the best contact I ever had. She came forward her spirit, her soul, and then showed me exactly how she died, what she went through, and the choices she made. Elvis, no. Rita Hayworth, I can't really talk about the third season yet. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to watch, but there are some celebrities, yes, we do come in contact with. Kayla? Yeah? Thank you for calling in, sweetheart. Thank you. Daddy thank loves you very you. much. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. That was my daughter, Kayla. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the first one she's called in for since we started the show. Oh, so. that's great. That's sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Um... Now, now, going forward, we've had a lot of questions that have been emailed in, and people want to know, Chris, and this is the, this is the people and entertainment uh, tonight part of the show. Mm -hmm. What's the sexual tension going on between you and Gail Porter? Hey, now. How do you know that? Come on. They can <laughs> see it on TV. They're telling me. it's You guys are all kind of just oozing that sexual, that Mulder and Scully <laughs> sexual tension. Is that Are you guys putting that in for the show or uh, what? Well, it's, it's funny because... You know, as we started the show, she was married and she went through a divorce. It had nothing to do with me. Um, it just, it <laughs> nice <went>. qualification. <laughs> it had nothing to do with me. Get that out of the way, right? <laughs> no, we just, you know, we didn't really get along the first season. I, I think it was because she didn't know what I was like and I wasn't myself, you know, because I didn't feel comfortable working with the entire English crew. You know, they're very harsh. <laughs> and I mean, they're very gutsy and right to the point. You know, they'll pick on you. So I was being picked on a lot, so I kind of kept, kept to myself. As we went into the second season, like, oh, my God, you got a sense of humor, this and that. You know, we, I, I love the crew. I mean, it's been a great time. It's so much fun. We've become a family. We have had our ups and downs. And for people that know, Gail's gone through a tough time. Um, she's got alopecia. Uh, she lost all her hair. Um, she's got uh, sort of a thyroid problem, some other issues that she's dealing with. And it's been very rough for her. Uh, she's been a trooper. You know, she's worked very hard through the season. She's had a lot of emotional breakdowns, and we've all been there for her. Uh, doing the show has not helped uh, putting her in certain situations to where there's low-level entities and that type of stuff. She's had, remarkably, uh, a couple walk-ins. Um, 
that being a skeptic, she has been overcome by spirits. People may have noticed that on Lucille Ball episode. Uh, also, now explain explain some of these terms for the people okay. that are new to a the walk in. There's a couple different types. There's possession, where someone will be become possessed, mostly like a, by a demonic or very low level spirit that'll take over your body for their own selfish purpose. Okay, and you have no control and you fight it. A walk in is a spirit that will slip in for a reason, and that reason will be possibly for enlightenment, um, possibly to show you something, or will help somebody else that's in the room. Uh, Gail had a walk-in of Kate Morgan, who haunts Hotel Coronado, and Kate had slipped into Gail, uh, basically, and let her experience exactly what Kate Morgan felt when uh, before she died and while she was dying, and that was probably the most traumatic experience Gail went through. Gail went through a couple more experiences in the third season. Um, I do plan on talking about it after the season. The reason why I can't talk about it now is because I don't know if it's going to be in the Billy the Kid episode or not, because it was very traumatic. Um, it was it shocked the entire crew, and it was on camera and off camera that it occurred. I actually recorded some stuff that occurred off camera, and I have that in my possession. It was amazing to me. It was literally amazing, but the crew felt that no one's going to believe this. And I said, it doesn't matter. We have to show this. This is what happened. So I don't believe it's going to make in the final episode. And basically what that was is she had a walk-in that was inside her physical body for a long period of time. And uh, it was pretty amazing. But Gail Can you her, see a physical change when there's a Her walk-in? attitude, let's just say she was a boy. <laughs> Wow. And uh, she got very mad if you said she was a girl. And she was saying names that we didn't know who these names were. And the names, we then did some research and found out they were people that existed during the time of Billy the Kid. And nobody, even the people that owned the, the place we were staying at, were aware of these names. Wow. No, it no. was amazing. How did they pick Gail to be your co-host? Is she also an intuitive or a No, Gail, or? Gail's a skeptic, she's, but she's, she lives in this paradigm shift, and we have these battles. Some people, we've got a lot of fights in the third season. People will see that because it's gotten to a point like, Gail, why won't you just accept what just happened? And I think this thing is, is she's not only is she skeptical, but she is afraid, I think, to really change her ways because if she does, she's going to have to be more responsible for herself. And I think anybody that is in a comfort zone or lives in a box or a paradigm cannot make that shift because if they do, that's just way too many more things for them to worry about. And it changes their whole perspective on life. So it's very difficult to kind of sway her, to show her, regardless of what happens, she'll freak out, she'll go, oh my God, yeah, it is paranormal, I'm out of here. The next day she'll be like, oh, it was just the wind. Or it was just... You guys do sound like Mulder and Scully. Oh, my God! After seven seasons, you'd think she'd stop asking oh, Mulder I <laughs> why he believed that. I my brain. It's, I pull my hair out. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. As a bald man, let me tell you, don't do that, Chris. <laughs> he doesn't on. grow back. <laughs> yeah, hold on to it, brother. Hold on to it. <laughs> uh, now, if you have a question for Chris, you can go ahead and email it in at dave at darknessradio. Again, that's dave at darknessradio. Or you can give us a call at 612 612- Three seven five one four zero zero. Again, that's six one two three seven five one four zero zero. You can also go to our website at darknessradio.com and join our growing forum there by clicking on the discuss tab. And there's actually people on there talking about the show live as it's going on. We have a great community of people. You can feel free to join up and go over there and talk and chat. As a matter of fact, from time to time, the guests have been known to stop by there. As a matter of fact, Chris was uh, kind enough to drop in last week while uh, while we were doing the show with um, somebody who actually helped us get on the show last week. Uh, so I really appreciate that. That was Mark. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they, they'd they worked with you on the Howard Hughes episode you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, they were on the Howard Hughes episode. And the Howard Hughes episode is a great episode, but there are a couple things that if they would have thrown it in, it would have been incredible. But still, I'm very happy with it. Mark had... And this is it's interesting because I should touch on this. A lot of the seances that we do, there are skeptics that are part of the seances sometimes and other ghost hunters that don't believe in working with psychics and skeptics. And I can understand their concern because they're more scientific-based, and that's fine. But I love it. This is the best part about doing these investigations. It has nothing to do with me. I've had more experiences than people could, could ever comprehend. It is having other people that have not had experiences have experiences during our investigations. During our investigations, during our sense, um, seances, 
people have had some incredible experiences. People have begun to channel when they've never channeled before and come out of it, don't even remember what just happened to them, and we play it back. It's amazing. That's basically what happened to Mark. There was a, a Goldfield Hotel, and there was a guy that had was believed had murdered this one woman there and thrown her child down a chute, which was terrible. He was trapped there. He was stuck here. He didn't move on because he didn't believe he could be forgiven, and he was shame, just shameful of his whole existence. He was stuck there. This spirit was channeling through Mark. Mark doesn't remember any of it. He didn't even believe it. He was even arguing with us. He goes, that's impossible. That can't happen. I've never done that. And he was getting mad. You know, we had to show him parts of the tape, and he didn't even want to listen to the audio. He was adamant that nothing happened to him, but we saw it. I was communicating to the spirit. Um, I was conscious of myself, and I was speaking to him. I knew what was going on. And I talked to the spirit, and we helped it move on. Finally, it was very difficult. But here was somebody else in the sense that was doing what I do, and that's happened a lot. And the reason being, some psychics and mediums out there will yell at me for this. Okay, but let me tell you, it's not, the show is not about me. This show is not necessarily about the celebrities. It is. It's a documentary, but it is about the afterlife. It is about spirits, and whatever messages they have to say... It has to come through. And if that spirit feels that, you know what, Chris might not get this, or I'm going to feel comfortable going more through this other person to get that message across, then so be it. And that's what happens is that some of our seances, is the spirits will say, Chris is not, you know, relaxing enough, or he's not going to get this message. I'm going to go through someone else so he can talk to me, and the message can come out. And that's what happens. And it's incredible when someone has never had an experience or is even a skeptic, and we walk out of the seance going, I can't believe that happened to me. Do you think that maybe they choose to go through the other people because not so much that you're closed off to them, but maybe they know that you'll be able to understand the yeah. messages that are coming through? Definitely. And they need you to be like the translator? Definitely. Um, during Jane Mansfield, there was a woman that we were short people for the fans, and we just grabbed someone from an apartment building and said, hey, you want to be in the fans? She's like, okay, what's this about? Jane came forward, and I kept seeing this man she was pushing forward. She goes, here's a man. you got... I go, what's this guy coming through? And the director says, no, we got to get Jane. I'm like, she's pushing this guy forward. And I was talking, I'm like, somebody's brother died at this table. What had happened, to make a short story here, the woman at the table that had been brought into the, the sands at the last second, when she was about eight years old, her brother died. She had had this burden on her shoulder her whole life, upset, not knowing, wanting to know he's okay, missing him, and all that type of stuff. He came through as a 30-year-old, 28-year-old, and I wasn't getting it. I was like, who are you? I don't get it, and this doesn't make sense. He goes, you don't see this. On the other side, when we die, we move on, we're judged, all that type of stuff. We become who we truly are on the other side. Everybody's the same age. Everybody's about 28, 30 years old. You're not children, okay? When people see ghosts and they see spirits here, they're still trapped here, or they're coming back and showing themselves how they've been remembered. Okay. I'm seeing this spirit who he truly is, his true form, and I'm seeing this older man, you know, 20, 30 years old. He's like, Chris grab her hand and I said to her, listen he wants me to tell you something I don't know who this guy is I grab her hand all of a sudden I start seeing him as a child and I see him go through me into her and all of a sudden she's feeling his presence inside him and she goes oh my god it's my brother and then she tells me he died when he was eight years old I go no wonder you know I'm seeing this older man and I can't make the correlation between you and him and there it was and she felt his presence, then she started feeling stuff from Jane Mansfield and everything, and she was picking up my energy, and it was channeling now through her. It was amazing. Now, now you did Jane Mansfield. Isn't Mariska Hargitay her daughter from, I think it's Law & Order? I think so. Do you ever have any of these celebrities, uh, their kids or family, get really upset that you're trying to do these connections? Mm, not so far, no. I don't, I've never had anybody call me or any letters, hate mail or nothing like that. And where could they send that if they want? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're listening I live to the, in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> you're listening to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. Our guest this evening is Chris Fleming, one of the hosts and stars of the Biography Channel's TV show, Dead Famous Ghostly Encounters, which has its third season premiere coming on uh, the 4th. That's Tuesday night with Bing Crosby. We'll be back with Chris to talk about more, and maybe we can pry a little bit more information out of him about the Houdini episode. Oh, yeah. We'll do that right after this. What? Once you have seen Dave and Tim in the light, you'll understand why we must return to the darkness on the edge of town. Stay tuned. There is more to come. If you, if you read Tap 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 You'll, You'll be, be able, able to tell, tell the, the difference, difference between, between the absurd. Could not go to work because Bigfoot stole my car. 
and the creepy. Pap's Pirate Bag takes you where few would ever go on purpose. <laughs> From exclusive interviews with the cast of The Ghost Hunters to the latest trends in technology, the field of the paranormal. To join our journey, order at tapsparamag.com. When Dave was a young boy, he once awoke to find himself staring directly into the eyes of a shadow person. Turns out it was just his life-size cardboard cutout of Donny Osmond. Go away, Nicole. Go away, Nicole. Welcome back to the darkness on the edge of town. Good evening and welcome back to The Darkness on the Edge of Town. Boy, that music just does not go with the <laughs> darkness theme, does it, Chris? No. <laughs> it kind of ruins the whole image, doesn't it? Uh. You're listening to The Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. I'm your host, Dave Schrader. Our guest this evening is Chris Fleming. I keep wanting to say Chris Whiting. Who the hell is Chris Whiting, Dave? I don't know. Come on, you're the psychic and intuitive here. you got to help me out. Chris Whiting keeps popping up. But uh, Chris Fleming is the host of Dead Famous Ghostly Encounters on the Biography Channel every Tuesday night, and you can check those out at 9 p.m. Central Time. Uh, Bing Crosby is the first episode coming up here on the 4th. Now, we do have a bunch of questions from people on the board that sure. want to know, first off, what was your most frightening moment? Uh, I, I don't know if they mean just... In life, or I mean, uh, I mean, in not in life, but I mean, in doing your investigation all through your life, or on the show. So maybe you could tell us a little bit of both. Most frightening moment, probably the gas bill I got last month. Yeah, uh, yeah no, me too. No, doubt. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, I would have to say doing the show, uh, Albert Hitchcock and the Houdini episode. Uh, Houdini episode, we went to Eastern State Penitentiary, and. When we were filming, they said, Chris, you know, Gail's going to go over here in the cell and, you know, she's going to be by herself, but she's never by herself. She's always got someone with her. But, Chris, you go down here by yourself, <laughs> you know, <laughs> down this long corridor that's considered to be one of the most haunted corridors. Take the camera, take the flashlight, and go by yourself. Well, being a sensitive and knowing, you know, believing is one thing, knowing is another, knowing that there is something down there and having to go by yourself, eh, I'm like, please don't do this to me, you know? Well, I go down this long corridor, and it's like almost 100 yards long. That's got to be like every nightmare for a little kid, knowing that there's something creepy in the basement yep. and being afraid, and you actually know that there's something at the end of the... I oh. know there's something dark oh. down there, and there's, there's things that people call the shadow people and the dark right. figures and stuff Those like that. Those are just I, cardboard cutouts of Donny Osmond, didn't you hear? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used to see these things as a kid, and what I consider those are low-level spirits, low-level entities. They're, they've pushed themselves away from the light. Their vibration's a lot lower and they basically move from darkness to darkness, shadow to shadow. That is where they feed off. They feed off of people's fear. They feed off of people's energies, as well as people's addictions, drugs, alcohol, and that type of stuff. They can slip into somebody and make them do things and stuff like that, vampiric type qualities. Well, I'm going down the corridor, and all of a sudden, my flashlight goes dead, the camera goes dead. Now, these are both fully charged items. They both go dead. I am now in complete darkness halfway down this tunnel hallway and I cannot see my hand in front of me then I feel the temperature drops dramatically and I feel all this presences around me as if I'm being surrounded I have two words for you dude run well <laughs> I know. hey you know what at that moment I don't blame him I'm standing there and I actually panic because all of a sudden I started feeling a sense of disorientation and vertigo now, it was not, I, you know, some people say, well, that's fear. That's a sign of fear. It is not a sign of fear. I literally felt like I was upside down. And I tried to remain calm. I said, listen, leave me alone. You know, I'm leaving. And I went and I touched the wall, and I followed the wall, tripped a couple times, and I went all the way back to where the light was, and I was out of there. And the director's like, well, how'd it go? I said, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> and I said, the camera went dead. I said, we should never be alone. You always have to have someone with you. So I went down there with the camera guy. The light on his camera goes dead. And we're in complete darkness, but we were still getting video. And you see a little bit of that on the show. That, to me, was the scariest thing because I was all alone. And you don't know what's going to happen. I've channeled, in the Thunderbird Lodge episode, there was an entity that entered into me, and I collapsed while I was standing up. I didn't know what was happening to me. I thought I was passing out or something. I've never passed out before. I grabbed the camera guy, I fell down. All of a sudden, the spirit was speaking through me. I've never had a spirit force 
enter into me to communicate, and that happened at Thunderbird. I was afraid that that was going to happen at Eastern State. Well, let me ask you real quickly about Eastern State. Now, you know, we're good friends with the guys from the Ghost Hunters TV show. Mm -hmm. That is a great show, yeah. And uh, they went to Eastern State Penitentiary, and that's where they caught that very controversial footage of that... Uh, kind of like a black shadowy person running, kind of backing up towards camera and then taking off mm -hmm. running. Now, as a psychic, or I know you don't like the word psychic, but as a sensitive, were you able to sense that same presence there? Uh, yeah. Um, the interesting thing is I can totally relate to that location and experience when you say that. Because mm -hmm. when I was there, it's funny, they said that someone was filming here a week before, some ghost hunters, and they ran out of here. And I said, oh, okay. And I did say that in the episode. I said there were some ghost hunters here. I didn't know it was the ghost hunters. Right. <laughs> you know? And I got a lot of slack. People said, oh, they ripped on the ghost hunters on Dead Famous. I said, no, I didn't. I just was trying to tell Gail there was some ghost hunters here that ran out of here because something happened. Right. She's like, oh, yeah, right. Well, we'll see, you know? Well, while I was there and in the cells, I thought, my God, there is some dark energy here, shadows moving from cell to cell, and I was feeling that. I wish I would have seen that episode before I was there because I would have been able to do a little bit more research and investigations. I did see their episode, and I watched it over and over again. And I've argued with some professionals in the field saying, oh, it's fake. No, it's not. I, I believe that it's real, okay? Let, let me ask you this. It's, and this is something, I, you know, I hope, I, I know we're talking about a different com, com, competition kind of TV show here, but one thing that, that the ghost hunters keep noticing is that these entities that they keep catching on film are incredibly short. They're like three and a half to four feet tall. Did you ever see Phantasm? As a kid? Yeah, way back Remember way. those little Jawa figures? Oh, yeah. It looks just like them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, but, but that's what you sense there? Something that size and height, too? Yes. So you can kind of validate that yes. that's what they caught, too? Yeah. Well, you heard it here first, folks. The guy from Dead Famous is validating what you saw in Ghost Hunters. Well, I know. I, I can't validate with actually seeing the ghost. <laughs> no, people, I know. But from what I've seen, the thing that is interesting is, and what I've seen as a kid, is ghosts especially these ectoplasmic vaporous type ghosts, somehow their physics are completely different than ours. They can go through walls, they can go through any type of object because they're not restricted to our physics and gravity. There's no such thing as time or physics on the other side. They're able to manipulate their forms. That spirit goes in and out of itself. It's coming forward, then it changes direction within itself, goes within itself and goes the opposite way. That would be great. That would have been great if I could have done that playing football. Right. <laughs> you know, no one would be able to catch me. But that right there should show you the validity of what you're getting is that a person can't do that. Right. So, now, Well, I know that there was a lot of debate that somebody they thought somebody was wearing like a black cloak and kind of backed up towards the camera and then took off running. But again, the height and everything was just strange. It, it, it's possible. I mean, I can't say with 100% validity right. that that is true. But what I can say is from what I know of ghosts and entities that they can do that. Mm -hmm. They can go in backwards and forwards in dealing with this short little entity which i believe is darker okay it, 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 what is it really what is the name of it i don't know but what i do know is these shadow people these cloak people which have been known since the beginning of time many civilizations have described these type of entities in different sizes and different shapes that these things deal more with the dark side pain um traumatic experiences death you know evil doings um ciphering off of people maybe there are some type of monks some type of you know society that exists in a different realm i don't know for sure but they sure are intriguing now explain to people why would you have gone to eastern state penitentiary to try to hook up with houdini well houdini had gone there from what we had done in our research to basically he was trying to he was an escape artist he would be shackled, and he wanted to go to Eastern State because I believe you know, people couldn't escape from there. Right. So at one time, he had gone there to get locked up and kind of look at the different types of equipment they use to shackle people, to put them in jail cells so he can get ideas for some of his shows. Now, you, you alluded to Houdini, and you couldn't talk about... The well, I'll talk about it. The show. What what <laughs> what was being what was holding you off before? Why, well, why here, you... Here's the thing. We had a séance. There's a séance done every year to try to contact Houdini. Right it's been on done, Halloween night. Yeah, right. it's been done. It was passed on to uh, Dorothy Dietrich, who is mm -hmm. a magician and a wonderful person. Right. But she's a very hardcore skeptic too. She has a séance every year, and uh, some of the family members, the Blood family, who is related to Houdini, would attend. And the director and producer told me aside, Chris. Uh, you know, in respect to them, we don't want you channeling or, you know, flopping around like a fish at the table. <laughs> you know, tr you might scare them and offend them. And I'm like, right. okay, so basically keep my mouth shut. And they're like, yes. So I sat there, and within 10 minutes, Dorothy went through the entire seance. 
uh, Houdini, are you here? Can you come through? Okay, he's not here. Goodbye. And I'm like, whoa, you can't do that. But this person is not used to doing seances, doesn't know what she's supposed to do. This was bestowed upon her to continue every year, and it's a big burden. Well, I'm sitting there going, all of a sudden, I see in my mind's eye, I see Houdini standing from a great distance. He's looking over a ledge from what it looked like to me, and he's looking down, he's shaking his head, and he's saying, I can't, I can't. And what I gathered in those short 15, 20 seconds that I felt him and saw him was he has moved on so far spiritually to such a high level that when you get to that high level of a knowledge and experience, there's no reason, no spiritual purpose for you to come back. It would be going backwards in time. It would be going backwards in your evolution. And he can't do that because he's moved on. Now, this is not just some excuse for him not coming through. This is, this is true. This is what I picked up. And I sat there going, he's never going to be able to come through. She doesn't know this. While we're sitting there, she's all done. And I started feeling her emotion. She was very upset. And no one else caught on to this. And I'm like, I put my hand on her. I go, Dorothy, why are you so upset? She lost it, started bawling. And you don't see this in the episode. But you see me holding her hand. You didn't see the question I asked to her. She's like, well, I feel like I, I can't get a hold of him. And I want to get a hold of him. And I told her, listen, I just felt him. This is what he said. You're not going to be able to let go of that regret, let go of that burden. But know that he hears you, and it's okay. This was remarkable because she is a hardcore skeptic. And she then broke down emotionally and says, you know what, I believe you. And that has helped me so much in understanding what I'm doing. But you don't see it in the episode. And this, to me, was amazing because there are many different levels that these spirits are at and many different messages that they relate to us. Some of it has nothing to do with them, but sometimes it does. And that's the beauty of the show. You get to see bits and pieces. Now, Chris, one of Houdini's vows was to actually prove that there I know. was life after death. I know. So has he, do you feel, or do you know from speaking to other sensitives, has he already proven himself? Has he come well, back and me, proven it? Well, the thing is, is I was proven when I was a kid. Because <laughs> I saw a ghost standing in front of me. You know, but for him, it, here's the thing, okay? We go through life. And we have things we want to accomplish, and we're, like, so excited about it. And we think our whole purpose of life is that. But when we move on to the other side, and we have the supreme knowledge that we're given where we can access anything in time and space, you know, some little thing that we worried about in this life is irrelevant to us being on the other side. It doesn't mean anything. And it's like, I really don't care about that when I was there because now I can do so much more, and I realize my true purpose of who I am. So why would I go back to some piddly little thing and have to worry about it? Because that also might affect people's destiny and their life progression in this life. So that has nothing to do with my evolution. So for him, there was no significance to it once he was on the other side. There was no reason for him to come back. I, I did an article a couple of months back about Houdini and his quest to kind of come back and also his quest to debunk mediums and psychics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I almost wonder if uh, it's more of a conscious decision that, yeah, he could have come back and made contact, mm -hmm. but his whole life, the, the second part of his life after the escapism stuff was debunking this, mm -hmm. and if he could make contact, then that would almost validate uh, all the hacks that were out there claiming that they could contact the dead. He, he might have almost realized that he was going to do more damage I mean, do you, awesome. you follow that, what I'm saying? That's, that's interesting. It's an interesting theory. Because you know? if he, you know, he, he, if he could come back, yeah, okay, this medium's good, but then he's not here to differentiate or, yeah. or help people decide who's good and bad. Now all we can say is Bess goes, yeah, he was able to pass on the message to me that, it's, uh, that it was him and, and, you know, gave me the code, which then would open up the whole world of mediums, which he had spent his better part of his life trying to bog down because he felt that they were, you know, kind of raping the, uh, the, the grieving. That, that's quite possible. And then the thing is, is people are like, well, don't you feel like offended or anything you're doing Houdini? And I said, no, not at all. I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've worked with some amazing, amazing mediums and psychics. I've worked with some fantastic parapsychologists. And I've worked with the other. You know, I've worked with some that I hope I don't work with again. You know, but, and that goes hand in hand with anything. You've got good attorneys, bad attorneys. You've got good I'm police sorry, officers. I, I bad forgot, what were the names of the people that you don't want to work with? I, I don't like to backstab anyone and everything. I, I think karma... Within life, karma will get you one way or another, and we leave it up to that. That is their destiny. That is their role in life, to learn their lessons in any way they can, and, you know, good for them. But in my sense is I'm not going to waste my time on it because I have a purpose, and I'm trying to fulfill that. 
Well, we've got uh, a couple more EVPs, and I know people like the EVPs. I love them. So I'd like to get to a couple more. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the Queen Mary investigation oh, we're doing. Oh, that's great, yeah. And then uh, we'll play a couple of those EVPs. What, why were you investigating the Queen Mary? Queen Mary went there for Lucille Ball because Lucille Ball used to go on that ship a lot. Uh, and I believe she'd sail there, I think, for her honeymoon or for something else. Didn't tons of uh, celebrities? A lot of celebrities, right. yeah. Yeah, so were you picking up on other celebrities while you were there, too? No, we didn't pick up on any other celebrities. Didn't even pick up on Lucille. But I'll tell you what, that place is phenomenal. I want to go back there and spend like a couple days there, spend the night there. It's fantastic. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and play the first uh, EVP we have there, Tim. It's, uh, I think, 32 is the first one I pulled. Now, is that the one that said, get out? Yeah. I said okay. something afterwards, too, and I don't remember what it was, but... Play it again for me, Tim, real quick. Now, what led to that? I mean, what were you asking questions? Were you just well, walking around? here's the thing is, you know, when I first was doing the first season, uh, I watched some of the tapes, and I, I watched the tapes to see what they keep in, what they what they don't put in, and that type of stuff. And um, I was walking around Queen Mary, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm talking to ghosts like they're kids. You know, I'm like, come here, kid, you know... Is there anybody here? Right. You know, come on, we're dealing with a lot of these ghosts or, or adults. <laughs> Why am I treating them like they're a little animal right. or like they're little kids, right? Come on, boy. Come yeah, on, Exactly. Spirit. And I was doing that. I'm like, oh, my God, I look like an idiot. <laughs> you know? Who's my cute little ghost? And it's you funny. <laughs> there's, there's an EVP I got that I didn't send you that oh, says, sure. you sound so pathetic. Oh, really? <laughs> it's like when I listened to it, I was like, boy, did that put me in my place. Wow. <laughs> well, now, you said that they're not children, but the other EVP that you did send almost sounds like a little kid. Well, I've got EVPs that were children, okay, and I've got EVPs that are adults. And people will say, well, wait, aren't you contradicting yourself? Because you say that on the other side, everybody's a certain age. But some of these spirits, these people, have not moved on. Right. So they have not become attached to their higher self, to who they truly are. Sure. So they're still stuck in that age. Well, sure, and if you're if they're haunting, most likely it's because they haven't moved moved right. on, right? I mean, there'd be no reason for a ghost that's moved on to come back and try to scare people or, or right. make connections, right? Okay. Right. Now, let's let's go ahead and listen to the second EVP, Tim. Or not? <laughs> I think this is it. I buried Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Can you speak to us, Jackie? Now, was that your voice asking? Yeah, that was me. Can you hear us, Jackie? There's a. Uh, we were working with Peter James. Okay. Um, and, oh, sure. And he had said that there's a spirit. He's the guy with the long gray Jackie. hair and the big yes. black mustache. Black right? mustache, okay. yeah. A nice man. Right. And uh, he says, you know, we can talk to Jackie. She'll hear you, you know. And now, I who called Jackie? out. Jackie? Jackie's little girl that had drowned in the pool. Okay. And her ghost and spirit's still there. Now, I thought they said that they've never been able to actually prove that that happened. It's just a, uh, one of those stories that have been passed down. There's really no exactly. documentation that a little girl drowned in the pool. Well, the one thing that I noticed a lot of places we've gone to is people say, okay, this is Bill, the ghost Bill. I said, is his name Bill? No, but that's what we call him. You know. And I said, well, where'd Bill come from? Well, he was hung. Who hung him? Uh, we don't know. It, a lot of this stuff can become legends or myths. The stories of who these ghosts are. Do we have any record proof that some go, no, but that's what's been told to us, and that's unfortunately the only thing we can say on the air is that from what Peter had told us, people that have been there before, that there's a girl that drowned there. But the interesting thing is, is that this spirit does respond to us when we ask for it. Now, and play we'll, it again for us, Tim, if you don't mind, Chris. Let's... Can you speak to us, Jackie? Now, see, to me, and again, I'm not trying to... to be a jerk here on sure. being the skeptic that I am. Sure. Uh, it sounds like a cat. Meow. Yeah, there's no cats in the pool area. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it's no a animals. huge place. How do you know that an animal hasn't gotten in the middle Yeah, no, I understand. Um, you know, that's, I'm just curious about that, because that one isn't so much a word as it is just kind of a sound. And right. then the other thing I'm curious about is, you know, since there's no history that a little girl drowned there, mm -hmm. and you made a mention about this earlier when you were trying to contact Mae West and the spirit came through claiming to be right. Mae West. right. Could it just be in a uh, demonic or, or a evil entity oh, taking on the, the guise of yeah. a child's voice to try to mess with it? Well, in, in that particular um, location in the spirit we're dealing with, no. I, I firmly believe that there was a little girl there, and I, whether her name's Jackie or not, I don't know. But I got a, quite a few other EVPs with the little girl talking. And the interesting, we were walking down one of the corridors by the rooms, and we were going to our location. We weren't filming at the moment. I felt someone grab my hand and pull on my hand. And I turned because I thought one of the crew was messing with me, right? 
and I felt that there was a little girl next to me. And to me, that was like, oh, my God. And that was before we even got to the pool and started mm-hmm. filming. It was interesting that I felt her spirit, her ghost, was interested in my own energy, trying to figure out who is this kid, you know, who is this guy, you know, and trying to make contact with me. And I thought that was just remarkable. When I listened and did the analysis on the EVPs a couple weeks later and I got those voices, I put the two and two together. And I was like, wow. Okay. Now we've got... Um those were the two Queen Mary ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we've got one, and it's it's just titled uh, what is it? Alta Alta Ciega Hotel, okay, where Ciega. Uh, Jim Morrison had spent the night and uh, actually lived there for a while. Okay, now this one's kind of quiet, Tim, so you might have to pot it up. But why don't we go ahead and listen to this one, and then you tell us what what we're hearing. <laughs> Okay, that's an interesting one where it freaked me out because the voice says, are you talking to Chris? Will you tell us who you are or tell him who you are? And then there's all these weird voices. Go ahead and play that again, Tim. And it, what it's saying is, are you, are you talking? talking to Chris? Will you tell him or us who you are? Okay. Are you talking to so now that wasn't you or anybody in no. your crew speaking that said, are you talking to Chris? Here's the interesting thing. During the Jim Morrison episode, after we did the tarot reading um, with the one psychic, uh, the crew was done, but I wasn't. I had to spend the night there and film myself in the room. And what I did was I videotaped myself, and I put the TV on to white noise, and I tried to get EVPs. I felt some presence there and everything. I had some interesting thing, things occur. And then, of course, doing the analysis about a week later, I got so many EVPs there. It was amazing. Um, and this was one of them. It, there was definitely more than a couple entities that were there that were communicating to me through the white noise. And I did experiments with the TV on with white noise, and I did it without. I also left the recorder on when I went to sleep, and there was still some voices that were appearing. Um, one of them says, it's time for us to go. Um, you know, we can hear you, Chris. You know, that type of stuff. So it was, it was amazing to get that kind of confirmation and communication from the other side. Now, why were you at that hotel? We were at that hotel because Jim Morrison used to live there. Okay. He lived there for what I believe, I think it was about a year or two. He had rented that place out to live there for about a year or two years. You're listening to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. Our guest this evening is Chris Fleming. He's a host and uh, co-host of the TV show on the Biography Channel, Dead Famous Ghostly Encounters. We're going to come back with Chris in a few minutes, talk to him about some more, wrap up the show here. Uh, We'll take your calls or your emails still. If you're out there and interested, you can give us a call at 612-375-1400. We'll be back with Chris right after this. I am Greenbluck 6. And when I am in your galaxy, I listen to Dave and Tim on the darkness on the edge of town. Howdy, this is Don Raleigh from Evolve Systems. Evolve Systems can't help you lose weight. We don't know anything about diamonds, and we can't help you save a boatload of money on your car insurance. What we can do is help you with your merchant processing. We work with small businesses to provide credit card processing, debit card processing, gift cards, and check acceptance. Whether you need a point-of-sale system, a credit card terminal, or want to accept payments over the Internet, Evolve Systems will work with your small business to find the right solution for your merchant processing needs. Ask us how you can get a free copy of QuickBooks 2006. You can reach us at 651-628-4000 or on the Internet at www.evolve-systems.com. Now you have a friend. Well, not yet. But give us a call at 651-628-4000, and we can chat. Evolve Systems, where we help you to manage change. This is Don Raleigh. Cheers. If you, if you read, read Taps Paramag every month, every month you'll, you'll be, be able, able to tell, tell the difference, difference between, between the absurd. Could not go to work because Bigfoot stole my car. And the creepy. <laughs> Taps Paramag takes you where few would ever go. On purpose. <laughs> From exclusive interviews with the cast of The Ghost Hunters to the latest trends in technology, the field of the paranormal. To join our journey, order at tapsparamag.com. This show is so frightening, it'll scare the pants off you. Beat it. <laughs> 
It's people with a dirty mind that think like that. On second thought, maybe you should just keep them on. You'd be amazed how often I hear that. Welcome back to The Darkness on the Edge of Town with Tim Dennis and Dave Schrader. Good evening and welcome back as we're wrapping up the final hour of our show this evening. Our guest is Chris Fleming. He's the star and co-host of Dead Famous Ghostly Encounters on the Biography Channel every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Central. Season 3 is kicking off this Tuesday, and the episode will be about Bing Crosby. Then on the 11th, you have Rita Hayworth. On the 18th, Nat King Cole. And on the 25th, Andy Warhol. Past episodes have included uh, characters like Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra, Mae West, um, Alfred Hitchcock. So if you get a chance, tune on. It's a fantastic show. Uh, I want to ask you here real quickly. Unfortunately, our computer's kind of bogging down on us. We had a couple more EVPs, and Tim was curious about it. We can't get him to play, but it says Hooters. Were you investigating a Hooters? <laughs> and can I come with? <laughs> Love those chicken wings. Yes. Um, yeah, actually, uh, some gentlemen, a uh, group, uh, Chicago Research Society in Chicago, I joined them uh, a few months ago, and Roy and uh, Mike and Alana and a couple other guys, the people. We went and did an investigation at Hooters in Chicago uh, off of Wells that is known to be haunted in the basement. And we had a great time. Uh, we set up cameras <laughs> and everything else. Now, the worst, the worst part about the whole thing is all the women had left. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? They all went home at oh. 11 o'clock, you know, so we're on our own. But uh, we had some interesting things occur down there. What, uh, what were they believing that it was haunted by? Well, they didn't know for sure. What they believed was there was the Eastland disaster uh, ship that capsized. Oh, um, right, right, right. Uh, in the bay there uh, in the early 1900s, and like over 600 people, I believe, died. They laid all the bodies out in certain buildings in Chicago in the basements for people to identify them. And they believe that Hooters was one of those locations so that some of the bodies of spirits might still be there. What I picked up on, there was two males and one female. Um, the female seemed to be more respondent and active to uh, the, the tests we were trying to do than the males did. The one male wanted nothing to do with it, and the other male was respondent. Uh, Roy captured some uh, orbs, some really cool uh, anomalies moving in and out of the walls and across the hall. Uh, I got some great EVPs, and then we had confirmation with the thermal... Uh, the not thermal, but uh, temperature readings where we would ask it to go down, and we had a regular controlled reading of 62 degrees, and it went all the way down to 55. We asked it to go to 55. It went all the way down, then it went all the way back up. So that was remarkable, and that happened on two different instances. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. I know there's uh, just amazing things in the Chicagoland area with the fire and the, mm -hmm. the sinking of the ship and all the different connections. I know the Sears Tower is supposed to be crazy haunted. Uh, different thing. Have you heard that? Um, I haven't heard anything about Sears Tower, but I know there's some great locations. The nice thing about Nat King Cole is mm -hmm. we get to film in my hometown here in Chicago, and we go to Excalibur, which is known to be haunted. We go to a right. restaurant called Rico D's, and we actually went to his high school where we had some interesting things. What was occur. his connection at Excalibur? Well, the thing at Excalibur, I guess they believed he used to, bands used to play there, okay. you know, musicians, and they believed that he had played there one time uh, early whatever 19th whatever the year 50s, was right yeah. i'm not good at history <laughs> right. <laughs> no but, but yeah because i know that that's a pretty famous haunted spot where somebody i guess fell off the top of the stairs or something and died supposedly at the bottom of one of the concrete stairways yeah there's, the there's been there was a death they talked about but that place is very active there's a lot of good spirits and we did have some incredible activity occur too um both good things and bad things and uh, hopefully that'll be in the show but I enjoyed, uh, I definitely enjoyed researching that place. Yeah, some of the people on the board would like to know if you could take any celebrity with you on an investigation, who would you really like to take and why? Uh, I mean, a live celebrity? Yeah. Oh, they're, whoever would want to go. You know, the interesting thing is I met, <laughs> I met Robbie Williams, the pop singer in England. Oh, okay. He came up to me when I was eating dinner in uh, L.A., and he's a big fan of the show. And I was like, oh, wow, it's Robbie Williams. You know, he's asking me about EVPs, how do you get them, this type of stuff. And... So it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I would love to have some celebrities join me on some of the investigations because um, it would be good validation if something occurs for them to let people know, yeah, something did happen here. You know, one person, just as an aside, um, you might want to contact is the family of Rick Nelson. I, I know that uh, Rick's daughter, Tracy, has used mediums to try to contact her father in the past. Mm -hmm. So they might be open for it and might be willing to go to these places uh, with you. Uh, that oh, that's cool. Might, yeah, that might be a cool little uh, touch to, to try. We have another question here, Tim. Uh, from Tammy from Ontario, Canada. She wants to know, uh, she says first, hi, Dave and Chris. Uh, can you please ask Chris when the podcast he is doing will air? Because unfortunately here in Canada, I can get the MH show more than the DF show. Uh, 
how's the book going, she also asks. And uh, she says, also, please thank him for the email he sent about telling me not to be afraid of the psychic gift since I was 10 years old, uh, to embrace it and learn. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've been, I started writing a book back in the 80s about my childhood experiences, and it's just been sitting in my file cabinet. Um, I haven't had time. I have a couple more things I'm finishing up. My webmaster, John, has done a tremendous job on the website, and we're doing a brand new version we're launching in a week. Uh, the podcast should be out in a week or two, and uh, it's basically going to be some of my experiences in the show, a lot of letters I'm going to respond to on the podcast, as well as I want to start interviewing people I've worked with. The, for all the fans out there, the one thing they need to know is, you know, I'll answer every email I get. It takes me a long time. But if you, if you really like the show and you want to know what goes on behind the scenes as well as stuff, go to the website, go to the investigations and where it says Dead Famous. I've got all the celebrities up there, and I've got a lot of them up right now, and I have more up as time goes on, of every single location we've gone to with the EVPs, the photos, that type of stuff. So you can listen to the stuff you don't even get to see on the show. And this just shows you the time and the effort and the research I put onto this away from the camera. I am a sensitive, I am a ghost hunter off camera. I've been doing this for years. I'm still learning some of the technical stuff with the equipment, so please be kind to me. But the sensitive stuff is you have questions, you have fears, let me know. I'll do the best I can to help you. Now, this podcast, are you going to be doing a weekly show? Or? <clears throat> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm well, still working on the intro out. to it. <laughs> but um, I hope to have it done in a week or two. I'm probably going to do it at least once a month, you know, maybe twice a month. Okay. Well, you know, and keep in touch with us if there's anything oh, we can definitely. do to help uh, get, your, get the word out about your podcast. I appreciate it. So. Anything we can do to uh, help you broadcast it, too. Just let Tim and I know, and we'll do whatever we can from our end. Oh, you guys are great. Uh, get it Thank out you. over a, a, a broad spectrum so everybody knows about it. The other thing is, you know, uh, just as an aside again for you, if you're uh, not already on MySpace, you might want to go on there and uh, put up a link so people can contact you through okay. that. Okay. Because uh, I know that's a great, great spot for a lot of us that have paranormal radio shows to uh, have people find out about us. Oh, wonderful. And at my Paraspace that Steve Compier has set up. So, yeah, he's got a big thing he's working on there. Yeah, yeah, that's a great, great place for you to, to uh, check it out. Okay. Now, wh what can you tell us? Where? What's the future here for uh, Dead well, Famous? Well, with Dead Famous, it, it decide, it's based on, you know, what's going to happen with Gail, um, where we're going to go from there. Personally, I don't know if we're going to be doing a fourth season. I do know that the show is going to evolve into something else. I can't say too much about it because it's being pitched to all the networks. Uh, Living TV loves it, and it's being pitched to the American market. It's going to take us to another level. Um, I'm excited about it. I have a lot of ideas of things that I want to see done that I feel haven't been done in this program that I really feel that the public needs to become aware of. And I'm hoping I've been putting together my own shows that uh, I'm going to start pitching in two weeks with my agent that we want to see these broadcasts. Some of them I'll be a part of them. Some of them I won't. But I feel it's very important we're going through a conscious shift, and the things that are coming, we need to be prepared for it. I really liked your paranormal idol idea. Who will be the uh -huh. next great paranormal TV show host? Oh. I think... <laughs> no? no. Si you don't think Simon Cowell will buy into that? No, I know there's that some investigation and EVP no. was absolutely horrible. <laughs> All I heard was blah, 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 blah. Oh, my God, that's funny. That is funny. Uh, people that are interested in the show, this is Chris uh, Fleming, who's joining us this evening, and uh, one of the hosts and, and stars of Dead Famous Ghostly Encounters, uh, which is a series on the Biography Channel every Tuesday night. You can check out his website at unknownmagazine.com. You can keep in contact with him there. He's a fantastic guy. He's out of Illinois. You know what, Chris? I don't know if you'd be open. I don't want to put you on the spot too much here, as you, as you might have heard at the beginning of the show. Right. We're trying to arrange ghost hunts where we're going to actually go out and hook up with a couple of the guys from the ghost hunters show uh i don't know if, if you'd be open to it but maybe sometime in the future we could arrange a ghost oh, hunt in to. the chicago land area and oh, bring out to. some of the listeners oh i'd love to and and meet with you and maybe uh, check out a couple of the the cool haunted areas maybe oh, even definitely bachelor's grove which i know is a incredible a, a fantastic place to go to and that's one that i've always wanted to get to even though i grew up in that area i never actually got out there but it's supposed to be one of the most haunted spots in Illinois, so uh, maybe we can find the clearance to get out there and do an investigation. Um, but if you're open to it, think yeah. about it, let us know. Yeah. And for anybody interested in doing a, a ghost tour in the Illinois area, Chicago land area with Chris and with us, let us know. You can email me at Dave at Darkness Radio, and if you like the idea, email Chris. Let him know that you like the idea as well, and we'll see what we can put together for you on that. 
Is there anything else you'd like to talk to us about promoting-wise? We've got about three minutes left in the show here. Let us know. Everybody can just pretty much keep up to date on my website with what's going on. The one thing is I, I definitely want to thank all the fans on my website and the forum. You guys have been fantastic. It's not about really selling the show, even though I want as many fans, people watching the show as possible. It's about selling the idea of what we're trying to accomplish. And we're, we're trying to prove that the paranormal does exist, ghosts exist, but we're also trying to help some of these spirits that are here learn from them what can they tell us as well as help them you know move on to the other side well chris i can't thank you enough for joining us uh you've been a fantastic uh, guest with us uh, you've been great stories thank you for sharing your evps i know uh giving us the opportunity to hear some of the things that other people can't hear and again you can check out his website he's gonna be putting up behind the scenes pictures and evps and stories that you'll never even get to see on the air so make sure you check that out um and, and again, he's going to have a podcast, so check his website for that. You're listening to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. This is Dave Schrader. Along with me this evening was my co-host and producer, Tim Dennis. We'd like to thank Chris uh, Fleming for joining us from Dead Famous Ghostly Encounters. The show will be airing season three. will begin on this Tuesday, the 4th of April. The first show will be Bing Crosby, then Rita Hayworth on the uh, 11th, I believe it is, Nat King Cole on the 18th, Andy Warhol on the 25th, and just keep watching. I think they uh, you said there's 10 episodes coming. 10 episodes, season. yeah, all through May and June. So, great, so May and June, keep tuned to that, keep watch out for it. We've got uh, next week, April 9th, we've got a fantastic show coming up for you. For the first hour of the show, we've got Grant Wilson from TV's Ghost Hunters will be on, and then in the second hour... Jason Hawes will be joining Grant, so they'll be online to answer your questions, talk about the new season, the cool new evidence that they're finding on the show. Don't forget to tune in for the new show of Dead Famous this Tuesday. And then on Wednesday on the Sci-Fi Channel is the second episode of the second part of the season for Ghost Hunters as well. So you get two great paranormal shows back-to-back. -back. Check them out. Tune into them both. And check out our show next week. You will not want to miss it with the Ghost Hunters. Email your questions in early at dave at darknessradio.com. Join our paranormal forum by going to darknessradio.com. Click on the Discuss tab. Open it up. Please join our board. You can talk with other great people. Learn about the paranormal. If you have a paranormal group and you'd like to put it on there so that people can find you and get help if they need it in that area. And uh, you belong to a couple of paranormal groups in Illinois as well, right, Chris? Right, right. Okay, and they can contact those through your website as well? Uh, they'll be up there soon, yes. Great. Well, I thank you very much for your time. I thank everybody for listening to the show. Remember to tune in with us again next week. You're listening to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show.